another teacher tip for you, and this is all about pencils and pencil sharpeners. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is just finding something to house the pencils in that are aesthetically pleasing and don't take up so much room. And for me, I finally found something that I think is going to work well. I found these at Ikea. Um, and what I decided to do with it is to give it a label. I made it on Word and printed it on sticker paper. And then this is kind of where we house all of the sharpened pencils. I also lined it with felt. For the pure reason that I was hoping to alleviate some of the noise that this could potentially make um, when kids are taking pencils in and out. In my classroom, if you borrow a community pencil and you no longer need that pencil, you put it back. If you have the pencil and it's time for recess, on the way out to recess or on the way out to lunch or on the way out the door, you have to put the pencil back. And this just helps me to keep the pencils from disappearing or kids taking more than they need. I mean, oftentimes kids will take four or five pencils at a time. Um, and this really helps me hold them accountable for you know our community supplies. I also have a um, unsharpened pencil bin where the kids will just stick and the pencils um, that need to be sharpened. And this is great to have a bin like this because I have a student whose job it is is to sharpen the pencils at the end of the day. So they go directly that, to that tub, sharpen them, and then stick them back in the other tub. So now comes to the pencil sharpeners. And we all know that if you gave the kids free reign to sharpen their pencils, they would be at it all the time. And while it might seem like, oh, it's just one or two kids. No, no, it's 25. And they find the absolute worst time to need to sharpen their pencils, right? They're sharpening them when you're in the middle of discussion or when somebody's taking a test or whatever it may be. But they, they're really good at finding the worst possible time to sharpen their pencils. So in my rule, in my classroom, we have a rule. And that rule is no sharpening with the electric sharpener. Um, during class time, only at recess, only at lunchtime, or only at the end of the day can they be sharpened. And that works out really well. It's just a non-negotiable. And so the students are pretty respectful of that. And we have a community manual sharpener and many of the kids have their own sharpener that they keep. Now, what happens when the kids break the pencil sharpener? Well, it's usually one of two things. Um, they've stuck something in there that shouldn't be in there, like a crayon or they've jammed the pencil in so hard um, that it can't come out. And usually that's because the pencil is too small. These kids love to see how small they can actually get their pencil. I mean, I'm impressed that they can even write with some of the, some of the pencils that are so small, like I don't even know how they do it. So I learned a trick a few years ago and I'm gonna share that trick with you now. Now I don't have the right size um, pencil for this to show you, but we're just gonna pretend that this is a teeny tiny pencil, okay? So what happens is this, is they jam that pencil in and all of a sudden, all, that's, all that you can see is the eraser. And there's no way for you to, to get a hold of it and it's just jammed, right? So now you're thinking, great, my brand new pencil sharpener is ruined. How, how am I gonna get this out, right? I'm gonna have to MacGyver an idea here. And it came to me. Well, I always keep push pins nearby the pencil sharpener ever since I figured this out. And what I do is very simple. Okay, so imagine that pencil is even further down, okay? And so what I do is it's already jammed in there. Okay, that's a beautiful picture of my hand. Oh my God. And I get it in there pretty, pretty good. You know, you can see, I think, maybe, let's see. You can see it's in there. Maybe you can, I can. And so then all you have to do once it's, it's in there pretty good is you just kind of go and you jimmy it. And sometimes they pull out really simply and boom, there it is. Your pencil is out, right? Pretty cool little trick. The next thing that I wanted to point out to you is this. So kids need a visual cue, right? Because they don't nest, I mean, some do, but many don't realize that they've pushed it in too far, right? That their pencil is too small and they're not gonna be able to get it back out. So I keep this little box here. And if the pencil can fit in there, it does not go into the manual sharp, into the electric sharpener anymore. It will only go into the manual sharpener. And I do not differentiate from this. I show the kids at the beginning of the year, 
I let them know, like see this pencil still is too big for the box. Therefore, it can fit into a pencil sharpener. But if it can fit into this box, it is too small. Now you and I both know that those pencils could still fit into the pencil sharpener. But for eight year olds, they just don't know how to differentiate between when it's too small and when it's not. And so having this box here has made a world of difference. I, I don't have to usually use the push pin trick anymore, but if your kid gets something stuck in the pencil sharpener, um, that is definitely a great way to get it out. So that is my teacher tip all about pencils and pencil sharpeners. And I would love to know what you do or if you have any cool tricks um, because we all know pencil sharpeners are not cheap. And if we don't monitor the kids with the pencils, they will eat you out of house and home. They will take all of your pencils. Okay, so um, that's it. Have a good day.